Good morning, everyone, or good evening if you're over in the States or uh, Europe. Tim Topham here again for my fortnightly repertoire wrap up. Uh, and so, what I do in these sessions, if you haven't seen one of these before, is just go through a whole lot of cool music that I've found recently that kids are really loving. Uh, and particularly music that you might not have heard of before or been so familiar with. Um, and one thing I really like to keep in mind with these sessions is to try and find books for you that you and your students can find many pieces in that are really appealing. Because one of the biggest things we have, uh, one of the biggest hassles I think we have is when we f have to ask parents to buy books and really we only use one or two pieces from them. So uh, my goal today is to show you a whole lot of new um, books, not too many because I don't want to overwhelm and I want to give you actionable things that you can use with your students. So we'll go through a few different um, early, uh, sorry, late beginner style pieces that really, really appeal. And this is actually following on from my last repertoire wrap where we actually took a look at um, late beginner music part one. Uh, and in that we had a look at um, a number of pieces by Pamela Wedgwood. And in fact, I've got, I've got so much great feedback about her music that I'm gonna feature one more of her books today, which is actually a brilliant summary of all of her best pieces, like the ones I was talking about last week, so stay tuned for that. We talked about Daniel McFarlane's Supersonics Music, uh, a book series by Robert Vandal, and another one by Kevin Olson. So if you're interested in any of those links or you missed last fortnight's video, then very easily uh, you can go to two places. One is to just have a look at my Facebook page, uh, and you'll see the, there's a video section. You can just have a look at all my previous videos there. Alternatively, you can head to timtopham.com slash rap, R-A-P, letter R-A-P, and on there you'll get links to all the different ones that we've had before. Uh, and in fact, you can just search for repertoire on my blog and you'll be able to find them. All right. Now, as you come on the call, it'd be awesome to hear if you're watching live. We've got a few people watching live, so just say hi. Uh, great to know that people can, uh, can hear me and are uh, on the call. All right. So... First up today is a composer that I know you'll all know, but you may not be familiar with a few of his latest works. And the composer I'm talking about is Christopher Norton. He's been on my podcast. We've met up at conferences. We've played duets together. We, are, um, we get on really, really well. And I really like his music because it is just so appealing, number one. But two, it's also quite pedagogically sound. So he does have a lot in there that students need to focus on with regard to hand movement and balance and phrasing and all that kind of stuff. So it's not just kind of, you know, bam into the music just for the hell of it. It actually does have a lot of great teaching points in it. The series that I want to talk to you about today is the micro series. Now, you will already know about micro jazz, but do you know that he's actually got a whole series, micro Latin, micro rock, micro ballads, they are very, very cool, and they are perfect for this late beginner stage. So let me show you a few pieces. The first one I'm going to show you is called Micro Rock. Actually, no, I'll do the ballads first. Micro Ballads. So this is a, a book full of, as you might expect, ballad-style pieces. So they tend to be a little bit slower, a little bit more open, wistful kind of sound. Here's an example of what they're like. So as you hear them played, if you're, uh, if you're enjoying them, give me a little bit of a heart or a thumbs up. Always very cool to know that people are enjoying uh, the music. So that's the first piece in the book, it's called uh, Merida. And nice kind of open sound, lots of fifths and seconds and ninths and those sorts of things. Uh, here's one called Lonesome. Uh, let's see what you think about this one. You 
got those little uh, appoggiaturas, or sorry, achacaturas, which really give that kind of open sound. This one's called Lonesome. It's got that kind of lonely cowboy kind of feel to it. I really like that one, I thought. Uh, the other thing I do like is that Chris always includes pieces in alternate time signatures, often in five, sometimes in seven. So this is his ballad in five from Micro Ballads. idea of that one. So they're all kind of flowing, just ticking along, great pieces, they're quite um, interballic and often have some chordal aspects in them, so great teaching points for students on those areas as well. If you're just joining the call, please feel free to say hi, always great to know uh, who's watching from wherever you are in the world. Okay, the next one I'll show you is Micro Rock. So again, this is this same series of Micro Jazz, but it, he's now expanded. I really love this one. This has got a lot of appeal. We'll have a lot of appeal for a lot of students. Let me play you a few of these, um, these ones as well. going to do your students any huge favors with learning uh, left hand or anything like that, right? It's not about that. This is about, remember what I've said in these, in regard to all of my repertoire raps in the series so far, it's about appealing music that's going to hook your students and those kind of pieces that are really going to help retain students and keep them engaged. I would never recommend a student only plays Christopher Norton micro rock just as I would say they should never play only Chopin or any, any one composer or any one style. They should have a huge variety. But for a student that's, you know, maybe a teenage beginner, been learning for a few years, can read this kind of level of music but isn't getting excited by the classics or any of the other repertoire that you've been um, using with them, then you know, this is the kind of thing that I use to go, aha, here's my hook for you, you this student. Now, let's see what other things we can do now that you're back into your practice and enjoying music again. Uh, so that was called In The Groove from Micro Rock. Kind of cool. Here's one called uh, Power Band. This kind of music I love, and as a boy, I would have totally loved this kind of a piece. There's something about the way he uses the chords that is is really appealing because it's based on the ideas of the pop music that students are listening to now. Anyway, this kind of that kind of sound is the sound of today's pop music, right? It's in fact it's the sound of the last 50 years of pop music. Uh, but it will ha naturally have an appeal. And you can use this kind of music to discuss ideas around why does that sound cool or how's it been constructed? What are those chords in the key of this piece and why are they? Why do they sound so cool, right? So that's another reason I like this style of music and the way that Chris has written these pieces. I'll just give you one more, a little bit of one more. This is number five in the book called The Gig. Right, so the thing I like about the, this approach is that you've got this. Which again is going to capture your students because it's something that we hear in music all the time, right? Think about... Um, right, 
out. That's going to be something that every piano teacher knows the sound of. Queen's another one, Bites the Dust. Or, um, uh, what is it? Uh, um, what's that? Yeah, Michael Jackson, Billie Jean, right? So if students get that kind of thing in a piece of music, again, it's going to make sense to them. They're going to enjoy it because they get it. This is how music uh, is composed these days, and it's the sound of now. So again, another reason I really like this approach, and like these books have got a lot of music in them. I think there's tw more than tw about 20 pieces each book, and it's while it starts at the late beginner stage like I've just shown you, it goes right through up another couple of years worth at least of work. So each book has quite a variety um, of levels in it. So that's Christopher Norton's micro series. Now next I want to move on to an Australian composer who lives relatively near me and that's uh, Elisa Milne. Many of you will know her wherever you are in the world. Uh, very well known composer and uh, music educator over here in Australia. She's got a number of books. I'm going to show you music from a couple of them. One of them is uh, this series here called uh, Little Peppers. Um, you may be familiar with this. It's a series of about six books. Uh, the one that I really love and want to show you today is just a couple of pieces from Very Easy Little Peppers. It's a sequenced uh, series of books that she's got. So this is the, the, the simplest level. And it's great. And you can buy it on Amazon, uh, so you can get this anywhere in the world. Uh, and let me play you just a few pieces. So. Uh, the first one I'll play you is called Square O, S-Q-U-A-R-E hyphen O. thing about Elisa's writing and the thing I really love about this series in particular is that the music is like a technical exercise but really cool and fun to play and sounds awesome right so this one is all about two note slurs the movement of the arm the uh, articulation and at this level for a student this is fantastic learning right we want them to be able to start moving their arms and wrists and be able to make these sounds and gestures as early on as possible. So if you can do that with a cool sounding piece like this, then I think you've got an absolute winner. Uh, smooth and crunchy, here's another one. So this is practicing different articulations in different hands. Sorry. She also loves doing two other things that I think are very cool, using odd time signatures really early on in a student's development and using lots of black keys, lots of sharps and flats, things which you know some students might get freaked out about, but in reality is actually really, really straightforward. <laughs> Good to see Anthony and David too. G'day, nice of you to have you on the call. So Salt and Pepper is one of those ones that uses both a whole lot of black keys and also 5-8 time signature. should have added, of course, in that one, you've also got pedal, but limited use, so really great for introducing students to the pedal. And you've also got hands crossing, and you've got huge dynamic range. Uh, and I might not have actually done justice to the dynamics in that piece. But you get the idea, this is the kind of music that is so pedagogically um, developmentally appropriate for late beginner students, and that's why I'm really, really happy to promote it. Then you've got something uh, completely different. Drowsy, warm, and peaceful, she says, is the tempo indication for this piece. It's called Slumber Song.
straight, really straightforward, relatively easy, but again, for a student that's kind of new to playing piano, there's gonna be some great technical challenges in there. She's got a really fun uh, jazz waltz, uh, which is a duet as well in there. Uh, another piece, three-legged race. I don't have time to go through them all, but rest assured, this is a fantastic book. So this is very easy, Little Peppers. The covers look like this. And again, if you wanna grab links to any of the books that I'm talking about in these repertoire wraps, just head to timtoppen.com slash wrap. Okay, so the next one I wanna talk about is by the same composer. Uh, actually, Elisa didn't compose all the pieces in these books, but she put them together, and they're called P-Plate Piano. Uh, these are a series of three books that were designed by the AMEB to take students from complete beginner to, sorry, out of a method book to developing the skills for their first preliminary level exam here in Australia. So it was kind of a bridging course, but they've ended up being just fantastic standalone books in their own right. I just want to play you a couple from uh, book number one. So it's a series of three books. Book number one, uh, again, great fun pieces that take students out of their comfort zone a little and try some new things. So one I want to play and one I've used heaps of times with my students is called The Wild Rest. Uh, and as you can imagine, it's got a whole lot of rest in it. It goes like this. So the great thing about this piece, and that's only half of it by the way, is that you can do fun things like, uh, like clapping in the rest, or you could say rest, 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 rest. There's also words and lyrics, you can sing along, all that kind of stuff. Um, sorry, I've just noticed a few of the comments coming through. Um, David also loves the P-Plate Piano Series. Yeah, totally cool. So that one's called Wild Rest. Great thing, of course, with a lot of the pieces in this book is that they come with accompaniments for the teacher. So you can stay really engaged with your student, keep them in time. And, uh, and I've used that piece. That's, that's one teaching piece I've used a lot. Really, really great piece for students. Another one called C Grotto. Uh, really great piece for getting students moving around the piano and it's effectively an improvisation because you only have notated two bars and then there's two bars worth of play uh, the, with the instruction that you play A notes, notes A, anywhere on the piano while you hold down the pedal and you hold the pedal down throughout the whole piece. So I'll just play the very start, it sounds a bit like this. <laughs> play the A's. And the student gets back in the middle. And so you get this huge, great sound effect. It's very atmospheric and it's incredibly simple. But the reality is that students have to remember to play staccato. They've got to get the dynamic contrast right. They need to remember to use the pedal. They need to stay in time. So there's still challenges in it. But the outcome of it is that students who are, are, you know, haven't played that much yet, really, can make a really great sound. Uh, one, look, there's lots of great pieces in this, uh, including another one of the other ones I really love. is called Quick as a Flash. It's split up into five different sections. They're labeled A, B, C, D, and the sections are only about two bars long. And the goal of this piece is that, so this is section A, right? And the goal, and I'll, I'll play B would go. So we've got a change of time signature between four, four and three, four, that's pretty cool. Once a student can play through A, B, C, D, E, they can start mixing it up. So they could play a whole lot of A's, a B, back to A, and then maybe some, and then the other section. So they can actually make up their own piece. It's a really great way of in, in, impro, um, introducing an improvisationary form uh, to students too. The changing time signatures are great. There's dynamics, there's phrasing, articulation, slurring. Uh, it's all there. Uh, great piece of music for students. There's a, <laughs> there's a version of um, Old MacDonald Had a Farm. It's called Sad Farmer. the teacher plays along with that. It's really great fun. It's a great one for having discussions around um, 
you know, major and minor and the effect that that has on music too. I'll play one more from this book. So again, this is P-Plate Piano, book one, one of my all-time favorites for students of this level. It's called Night Ride. Kids totally love it. If you've got boys in your studio, they will totally love it, I know. Uh, and the student part goes like this. <laughs> It's got a teacher duet part, really great fun to play, and great teaching points in there as well. So that's the P-Plate Piano series. Uh, really recommend you check that out uh, when you get a chance. Great fun to play. Uh, actually, while I'm here, I'll just talk to you about this series by William Gillick. Now, I, this is a little bit of an older series, right? Um, but it's actually got some total winning pieces in it. And uh, this will just go to show that I'm not all about the latest composers necessarily. There's some great stuff from some co composers um, from, you know, I think uh, William only passed away in the last uh, 10, 20 years, I think. So he's a relatively new composer, but I know these have been around for a little while. So teachers may be aware of it. I couldn't believe it. You can actually, this is a series of three books. This is one of the three. You can get the complete set of three for $3.50 on Amazon. I'll put a link on the repertoire wrap page for you. It's, it's ridiculous. If you don't just go and buy it, just to have on your shelf, um, you'll be kicking yourself. Um, the favorite for me in this series is, is book three. Uh, so it, 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 it is sequential in that the earlier ones are much simpler than the later ones. Um, but I think there's some great music here. This is just you know, moving along a little bit. So you're bordering on a preliminary level kind of student. But I guess that's a gap we're talking about here. So I've got things like the Queen's Minuet. So this is Accent on Solos Book 3 by William Gillett, um, Gillick. Again, the reason I've chosen this, fantastic strong teaching points regarding phrasing, balance. You've got uh, fermata, you've got changes of tempo and time, and you've got something that's stylistic as well. So you can, that's a minuet, you can teach students about minuets and how they sound. This one's a bit of a, a, bit of a funny one, it's called At the Circus, you'll get the idea very quickly. I feel kind of like I'm on a carousel getting sick as I listen to that. <laughs> Not to say it's bad, but that's just kind of the in imagery I conjure up in my mind. Um, Richard says, can we get links to all these songs? Yes, Richard, just head to my website. It's timtopham.com slash rap, R-A-P. All the links for what I'm talking about today are here. I'll just play you one more from book three. Totally love it. It's called The Swinging Sue. It goes like this. Great fun piece, has never failed to uh, engage students. Really great. Okay, and so for the last piece today, uh, last book today, I want to go back to a composer that I featured last week, and that's Pam Wedgwood, uh, superstar of engaging piano music. Uh, she's based in the UK, and in fact, she's coming on my podcast really, really soon to talk about her music and some ideas for teaching. I cannot wait to speak with her. It's going to be great fun. So last uh, fortnight, I talked to you about uh, a number of the upgrade books. So upgrade and more upgrade. Uh, again, links on that page that I just mentioned. Um, while they're all in separate volumes, of course, she has come out with this book, which is called Piano Fun, uh, Piano for Fun, sorry. And this, 
I just think is one of those books that every late beginner should get. Let me show you just a couple of the pieces. I played a few of them last week. Um, I think I played this one last week. Uh, sorry, two weeks ago. It's called Make Way for the King. The, the, the appeal for me for teaching her music is that it's just got that hook in it. So she uses a lot of fifths and a lot of strong kind of chord sounds in pieces like this. But she balances that with much more lyrical flowing pieces, again with those chord progressions that kids these days just love. They get it because it's, it sounds like their music of today. based uh, around obviously keys that students are able to uh, use at this age but also a lot of it's quite five finger position based so we don't have to worry students jumping around they can focus on one learning the notes two getting the dynamics the articulation the musical sense into it let me know if you're enjoying this music by the way I'd love to get a, a little heart press the heart button or a big thumbs up um, if you're enjoying some of the music that you've heard today It'd be fantastic to see from you I think I did play, play the Brave Knight last uh, last session. It goes like this. Uh, almost like trump, some kind of trumpet calls, and um, it's almost a bit Game of Thrones like in some ways. Uh, what else have we got? Mission Impossible, I played last week. Uh, it's a bit of a winner. Um. I've never had a student not enjoy playing that piece. And, uh, you know, not, not too hard. They can learn them relatively quickly too, which is great. Uh, she's got a piece with apologies to Mr. Grigg uh, in the Hall of the Mountain Bear. Uh, you can check that one out yourself when you grab the book. Uh, David, what did she say? Da uh, Brave Knight is another one uh, in getting to preliminary. Yeah, it absolutely is. And so is that Swinging Sue, someone might have mentioned too, uh, is, is in other books. Uh, so, yeah, look, I mean, it's just fun. The pieces, the titles alone are great. Minnie Mouse hits town. It's cool, man. The Mad Hatter's Funeral March. I played UFO last time. It's another one. Heavily based on fifths. Great one to learn really quickly and add to, particularly if you're doing something like the 30 or 40 piece challenge. You know, a book like this, students can get so much enjoyment from and can get so much value from too because there's so much in it which is of relevance. Okay, so uh, I haven't gone through all of it, but uh, hopefully that's enough to give you a little taste. This is just such a great wrap up of Pamela's upgrade books, you know, zero to one, one, maybe bordering on two at the back. Let's have a look. Yeah, it probably, by the time the back of this book comes along, you're playing at a grade uh, one, Probably one, grade one in Australia level, maybe grade two even at the back. So this, this would last a student for quite some time and would be a great addition to any collection that they've got. All right, so that is my wrap up for this week. So just to go over it, the Norton series, you know the jazz micro ballads, but did you know about the uh, micro, sorry, you know about the micro jazz, did you know about the micro ballads? and micro rock. There's also micro Latin, which I haven't shown you today because it's a little bit harder. I'll probably show you that in a future session. Uh, we also had um, two different series by Elisa Milne, Australian composer. Thanks for the hearts, by the way. I can see them coming across the screen. Really appreciate that. Uh, Milne's Very Easy Little Peppers is just a fantastic book at this level, uh, and that's on Amazon, so available everywhere. The P-Plate Piano books, which I had, where were they? The ones that look like this, um, unfortunately only available in Australia. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> it would be fantastic if they're available internationally. Uh, who knows? Uh, it might be that you can buy them and get them shipped overseas, I'm not sure. But I popped a link on the Repertoire Rap page to 
the P Plate Book 3 available on Hal Leonard Australia's website. Um, so whether they do international shipping, I'm not, but I'm not sure. Hopefully, uh, they'll be able to bring it out internationally one of these days. Who knows? It's probably the more I learn about um, royalties and copyrights and all that kind of thing, it might just be something that's not possible. I've got no idea. But anyway, we can hope, right? Uh, we also went through um, Gillick's Accent on Solos, and as I say, I just I cannot believe that's being sold on Amazon for less than five dollars. Uh, the complete series of three books in one. So grab that. There's a link on the on the Repertoire Wrap page. Uh, and we finished today with uh, the Piano for Fun book by Pamela Wedgwood. So I do hope that's been useful for you. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask them now. Uh, I can only see two lines at a time, so I'll do my best to answer anything that, uh, that comes through. If you've got any questions about teaching this age level uh, or this level of ability uh, or anything to do with teaching, I'm happy to answer a few questions now, totally fine. Uh, while I do that, I did want to mention that my next live session, I'm going to move these probably to a Wednesday uh, from starting two weeks time, which will be the start of term two over here in Australia. So if uh, you are catching up on these live at the time, I just wanted you to be aware, just check my Facebook page for information. I'll, I'll give you a, an update as to which day it's going to change to in two weeks time. The other thing I wanted to mention was that the next session, I'm going to show you uh, a little bit about this groovy thing. Does anyone know what this is? Chuck it in the comments if you've seen one of these before. Uh, I'll see if I can fire it up quickly while, uh, while we're um, talking. Uh, I might need to charge it actually. So this is a very groovy device that um, I'm going to be showing you guys next session or maybe even in a separate video I'm still uh, still working still waiting on um, working out exactly how to do it so this for those of you who haven't heard about it is called a sound Brenner this is actually I'll hold it right up to the camera here uh, this is a wearable silent metronome and I'm going to tell you all about it uh, and give you some of the tips uh, about what I've experienced with it um, in a couple of weeks time it's, uh, it's quite new, quite an interesting uh, device, uh, and I've been trying it on some of my students, and it's been very interesting getting their feedback too about it. So more details on that uh, in two weeks' time. And as I say, if you're finding this interesting, it would be fantastic if you could press the share button. There's a share button down there. We'd love for you to share this with your friends. It's only like a two-click process. Share with friends, let them know about these sessions, and uh, please, if you're interested in the links to anything that I've been talking about today, or in fact, in the last uh, six, what's it been? Six to eight weeks or thereabouts, the last four sessions we've had, head to timtopham.com slash rap, R-A-P. Be uh, fantastic to have you there. Links to uh, where you can buy all the books that I talk about uh, and where you can read more about them too uh, are all there. Uh, and each week, um, after these go live, I tend to add them to my regular blog uh, process. So we put a full transcript in uh, and also um, insert the video. It also goes on YouTube too. So lots of places where you can find more about this uh, and watch replays if you're interested. All right, guys, I can't see any questions come through, so I think I will uh, log off at this stage. Again, hope you're finding these helpful and I look forward to continuing to help you in our next repertoire app in two weeks time. Look out for my um, information about which day and what time it will be. Thanks guys, catch you later.